very good afternoon to south africa a happy evening to india i hope everyone is safe during this pandemic i am ranga an assistant professor department of commerce shishadripuram union degree college welcome to the 66th international webinar of shishadripuram union degree college at the outset i am happy to inform you all that our evening degree college is celebrating its a golden jubilee on behalf of our college we congratulate all the stakeholders department of library and information science in association with the university of port head the south africa is organizing this international webinar on global standards in library science session 6 i now request nagasudha madam assistant professor department of commerce to play a small video of our college over to you madam the journey begins with a small step proving the statement true it all began in 1930 when two women educational enthusiasts took up a noble initiative in the earth's while posh locality of shishadripuram shrimati anandamma and shrimati sitamma started a primary school with 20 children now shishadripuram educational trust under its umbrella has 36 institutions it all began with the educational visionary shri k m nanjappa the then president of shishadripuram educational trust in 1971 which has been a landmark in the history of education for the working students by starting shishadripuram evening college our college started with the primary objective of imparting formal education to the quality and needy the college is affiliated to the bengaluru central university being in the heart of the city it has an easy reach and connectivity its premises comprise of spacious building with good canteen computerized library business lab browsing center wifi facility sports club thus well equipped for all academic sports co curricular like nss ncc yrc etc and extra curricular activities throughout the year the college organizes orientation program for freshers and guest lecturers to equip them as most of us are working in the morning and studying in an evening degree college it is very facilitative for us to excel in our jobs even though we are studying in an evening degree college we are being provided many state level and national level opportunities to express our talents also many cultural activities are being conducted sedc is engaged in various cultural activities throughout the year there are numerous committees in the college that perform variedly on their behalf and have a lasting effect on the college students as well as outsiders Our evening degree college believes in the vision to ignite the minds of every student to identify and develop their inner strength with the mission to promote holistic development of students by offering quality education and making them self-reliant and progressive. Our college NCC cadets will visit every academic year in officers training academy Chennai the INS Kadamba Naval Base at Karwar. It will motivate our college NCC cadets to join Indian Armed Forces. Thank you madam I now request Harsha Har assistant professor department of commerce to welcome and introduce all the dignitaries to this international webinar over to you sir A very good afternoon to South Africa and a happy evening to India I take this opportunity to welcome you all for the 66th international webinar of our college At the outset I would like to thank all the office bearers of this great institution and welcome all of them Now I would like to introduce and welcome our first team speaker Dr Kony Bitso director University of Fort Hare Libraries University of Fort Hare South Africa Dr Kony Bitso is a director of University of Fort Hare Libraries uh, madam holds a phd in information science from university of pretoria and a masters degree in library and information science from university of cape town 
Madam has over 20 years of working experience in the educational sector from basic to tertiary education, especially teaching and learning, research capacity development, research supervision, and recently academic library strategic direction and leadership. Her interest now lies in academic le uh, leadership, especially in e-learning and e-research. Madam has been actively researching and publishing in information seeking behavior, behavior, information literacy, research data management, and LIS interventions for at-risk students. Madam is also a South African National Library and Information Consortium and a deputy chair of Southeast Academic Library Systems. Madam chair the market, uh, chairs the marketing task team of the committee for higher educational libraries of South Africa. Before joining the University of Fort Hare, Madam was a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town, UCT, where Madam taught courses such as information architecture and metadata, knowledge organizations and management, resource descriptions and communication, and teaching and learning for LIS professionals. Madam leverages on her knowledge of this subject's matters in her strategic direction and leadership. Ma'am, on behalf of Sheshadrapuram Educational Trust, I welcome you for this webinar. Thank you very much for the kind words and the a marvelously sounding introduction. And thank you very much uh, for this Madam, just a, just a minute. Uh, he'll let him finish. Just oh, one minute. Oh. Now I would like to introduce and welcome to today's second team speaker, Dr. H.S. Siddhamalaya, former chief librarian, Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bengaluru, India. Dr. H.S. Siddhamalaya, sir, started his career at IAM Bangalore, worked at Tata Consulting Engineers for a short period, and then at MS Ramaya Medical College, and later joined Nimhans in 1985, and served for 28 years. Sir was also heading IT department, data center in Imhans. Sir coordinated the development of campus networking and deploying hospital information system software. His notable projects are developing National Neuroscience Information Center, published three major Indian journals on CD. Neurology India was published on CD-ROM with 45 years of back issues, volume one, issue one. Sir was the president of Kala for one term and Kshala. Presently, he is a president of Health Library Association of India. He conducted three national and one international seminar. Sir visited European countries as British Council scholar and worked at the University of London, uh, Caring Cross Hospital London. Visited USA as invited speaker to American Mental Health Librarians Association held at San Francisco and in 2019 visited for special lecturers at Singapore, Sri Lanka on biomedical informatics. Sir was also acted as a visiting professor of Maha Chakram University, Thailand since 2013 and visited other Asian countries. Uh, Sir has 40 research articles and book chapters, more than 100 visited talks on various aspects, publication to his credit. Chair, on behalf of Sheshadrapuram Educational Trust, I welcome you for this webinar. It's my proud privilege to introduce and welcome one, of, one more distinguished person who is presiding in this webinar, Sri W.D. Ashok Sir, Honorary Trust, Trustee, Sheshadrapuram Educational Trust, Bengaluru. Sir holds a master degree in pharmacy, specialized in field of total parenteral nutrition. Sir served at, served at various famous Al Adnan Hospital, Kuwait, for over 13 years. Sir, he is an honorary trustee of Sheshadrapuram Educational Trust. Sir is a backbone for all the events conducted in our Uning Degree College. Sir, on behalf of Sheshadrapuram Uning Degree College, I welcome and request you to preside over this webinar. Thank you. I would also like, I would also like to welcome our beloved principal, Professor N.S. Atish Sir, who is a man of perfection and a guiding force for having organized this 66th international webinar conducted so far. On behalf of our depa on Department of Library and Information Science and our IKC department, I welcome Sir in his absentia. Due to technical reason, um, Sir is not able to join now. Very shortly, Sir will join us for this webinar. 
I welcome all the office bearers and trustee of Sheshadra, trustees of Sheshadrapuram Educational Trust and all the principals of our sister institution, other heads of the institution, conveners, volunteers, and all the participants who have registered across the globe. I welcome Dharapa Kunur sir, program coordinator, Rajat P.S. sir, IQAC coordinator, and Yogananda sir, librarian of our college. And finally, I welcome all of our teaching and administrative staff of our college to this international webinar. Good afternoon and thank you very much for the invitation and the, for the warm welcoming introduction. The presentation this afternoon is going to be around academic library standards and quality assurance. And I'll be approaching these from the South African perspective. And obviously from my institution that is currently going through the research process the review process. Um, um, part of my agenda, I think what the outline of my presentation, I will share a bit of a background on South Africa and the University of Forte and the higher education in South Africa and also touch on the concept of standard look into the global library standard uh, to try and align myself with the theme of the webinar and also look into the standard into the academic library and also the academic library standard framework in South Africa and look into academic quality assurance because standards um, are there to make sure that there's quality and in the process of delivering higher education or any education, quality is very important. And also, I think that aspect is also going to be from the South African perspective as well. Yeah, to start, um, uh, let me share a bit of background about South Africa and that we are a country in Africa at the southmost tip of uh, Africa. We are uh, 1,220,813 square kilometers in area. And we have got three capital cities, there's Cape Town, where, which is referred to as the legislative capital. And this is where the parliament and the legislation related matters of the Republic of South Africa are conducted. So, and then we have got the Pretoria city, which is an administrative or an executive capital. And this is where the president of the country and, and the cabinet ministers and a lot of high level administrative structures are based. And then we have got Bluefontein, which is in the Free State Province. And this is where the Appeal Court of South Africa and the Constitutional Court are, are housed and their services. And therefore it is referred to as the judicial capital. Uh, Pretoria is in Houghton Province, one of the economically, highly economically active provinces. Although in geographical size, it is the smallest province but it is a, a bigger province in, say, in terms of economic activity. And Cape Town is in the Western Cape province where it is actually sharing the border with Namibia and mostly the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean. So that is the place where the two oceans meet. And then we have Bloemfontein, which is in the Free State uh, uh, province, which is a, a central uh, a province that is surrounded by other provinces. The population of the Republic of South Africa is less, a little bit less than 60 million, and there are 11 official languages, and that already tells us that we are actually a nation that is characterized by different uh, races and also different um, groupings of uh, people and humanity. And the country has got nine provinces and we, the University of Forte are in the Eastern Cape province. And the Eastern Provi Cape province is actually enjoying the Atlantic Ocean and is sharing the border with uh, the Northern Cape province and also KwaZulu-Natal province, as well as the Western Cape province. So we enjoy as a country, the Republic of South Africa, two oceans, the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. 
Therefore, it makes the weather conditions uh, that of Mediterranean, especially in the Western Cape. Hence, we have got uh, beautiful wineries and beautiful grape plantations. But where we are in the Eastern Cape, the predominant um, agricultural goods are the citrus fruits. And then we also have some coastal climate that is warm in the eastern parts, such as like Wazudu Natal, where Deben is, and many other favorable places. Um, and then we also have got some arid places like the Karoo, which is the, like uh, towards the mainland, as well as desert places, which is mostly the Northern Cape province, which is like geographically the largest province in the world. And yes, we are part of the BRICS, the, 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 the Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, tripartite or, or, or link. Uh, hence, we, we had to honor uh, this uh, invitation and then participate in this collaborative um, exercise of this international webinar today. Uh, our campus, our University of Fort Ham, it was established in 1916, and therefore our handle on social media is usually at UFH 1916. Uh, the picture that I have there is one of the oldest uh, uh, buildings in, in, in Alice that was actually there when it started. It's beautiful and it was renovated. And we are one of the 26 public institutions, public universities in South Africa. We have got three campuses now. Alice is our main campus. And then we have got the Bishop campus, which is 60 kilometers away from Alice. And then we have got East London campus that is 120 kilometers away from Alice and 60 kilometers away from Bishop. So it is when a person drives from Alice, they pass uh, near Bishop and then they go to East London. We have got about 15,800 or almost 15,900 students, or probably by now we have got 16, around 16,000 students. These are the statistics um, of registrations at the beginning of this month or a, a late last month. And uh, around 8,700 are in Alice and uh, 6,700 in East, East London, and around 550 are in Bishop. I think I must indicate that Alice is a main campus and therefore it has got all six faculties, the Faculty of Science and Agriculture, that is our, our, our science, natural sciences and agricultural faculty. And then we have got Faculty of Law, Faculty of Education, Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities, Faculty of uh, Management and Commerce, and then which other faculty have I forgotten? Um, I think of uh, Faculty of Health Sciences. How can I forget such a very fundamental and phenomenal faculty? Um, in Bisho, the reason why we have got a small fraction of students is because it is just a department of public administration that is under the Faculty of Management and Commerce. But Bisho happens to be quite an iconic place in, um, in the Eastern Cape because that is where the, the, the premier of the province and the high legislation government officials are working and mostly are residing in Bishop. Hence, the, the, the department there is actually servicing the government officials that are working during the day and furthering their studies in the evenings. We have got undergraduate and postgraduate programs and um, they've got about 13,200 uh, undergraduate students and then around 2,600 postgraduate students. And uh, like many other universities in South Africa, we as a university, being a public institution and, and, and even other private universities really, in South Africa, we are governed by Higher Education Act of 1997. And it is the prior Higher Education Act that actually outlines that uh, universities must have institutional statutes, and the statutes are actually part of the legislation that is governing the universities, and it is gazetted and therefore a legal document. And out of the institutional statutes, that's where universities now derive their rules and regulations that are actually institutionally based, and they can revise and review them internally. Uh, now focusing on University of Fort Hale libraries where I am currently working. Uh, on the top left, um, we have got the Alice Campus Library. 
It is a library that was built in the 1970s when the population of the students was still small, probably around 500 students. Therefore, the intention, the business of that day and the purpose of, of and the mandate of academic uh, libraries at that time was totally different because now we have got a much, much bigger student population. There are more academic offerings. And as a result, there are also a lot of activities that are happening electronically and digitally. So it is actually a small uh, library and there are a lot of efforts that are being made to fundraise so that it can be expanded and also repurposed and refurbished. Uh, at the bottom left, I've got the Phyllis Tantala Collaborative Library Building. That is the library which is housing our East London Library. It is a collaborative library in the sense that it is a joint library shared by the University of South Africa, the Walter Isusil University, and the University of Fortier. It is the first of its kind in the library. It is the pride of the government of the Republic of South Africa. It is the pride of the institutions that are sharing it because they contributed the money, although the bulk of the money came from government, but they came together and joined hands as institutions of higher learning in South Africa that are in, in, in East London or having East London campuses, they decided to join hands and have this huge big building that is actually quite magnif magnificent and a state of the art uh, 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 structure. And part of, uh, we all know, and I'm sure uh, everybody knows how enriching collaborations are, so they are actually a field for cross pollination and cross fertilization of ideas. Our students of free institutions interact. Our fellow librarians working in that space are interacting. And when a little collaboration starts, it actually has a tendency to increase in a favorable and in a positive way. On the other hand, we have got the small Bisho library, as you can see, is old and it's a little bit smaller as well to cater for the small population of students in Bisho. Um, the role of government in uh, higher education and in particular to quality assurance is that of having the Department of Higher Education and Training taking care of post-school education and training. And within the Department of Higher Education and Training, there is university education um, that offers uh, support towards planning and funding within institutions that offers governance and management support. The reason is uh, South Africa, as you know, it has the history of apartheid. And uh, some institutions were actually designated for black people and black students, and they were highly under-resourced during the apartheid era. And other institutions were well reserved, were well resourced, and they were catered for white uh, 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 students. And that white privilege and the resources that they attained is still prevalent up until today. Therefore, the government has got this uh, university branch, the university education branch, that is focusing on supporting, uh, especially the highly high education institutions that are known as the historically disadvantaged institution with governance, with management systems, and with policies and research and development of teaching and learning. And one of the things that are actually key to the Department of Higher Education is quality assurance to make sure that the offerings, the delivery of the products and the academic enterprise and the research, uh, uh, the research project are actually of high standard and high quality. And as the library, because our core business and mandate is to support research, teaching, and learning, it is also important that we adhere to certain standards and we have to make sure and ascertain that our standards and our products and services are of standard as well. So now coming to the business of, 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 of the task that I was given, we need to briefly reflect on what is the standard and the, the standards actually are intertwined with quality assurance. Standards are there as a level of quality. When standards are there, we are able to use them to benchmark whether we are meeting them at threshold, are we operating above threshold, are we actually attaining the quality that is intended? 
So there are de facto standards and de jure standards. De facto standards are those standards that experts have come together and join and, and find themselves agreeing and ascribing to such standards so that they can offer their products, their services, or whatever activities that they offer in with consistency, with quality, with a, a purpose in mind, and making sure that they've got mechanisms in place that are going to determine that the quality is actually happening as intended. And then we have got de jure standards. De jure standards are those standards that are legally binding, that by law, uh, institutions, individuals, or companies, or, or various organizations have to adhere to. Let's say, for instance, if one is selling water, because water is something that will be consumed by people and animals, it has to meet a certain standard. If it doesn't meet that standard, it can actually be a health hazard. So water standards are those kind of like the jury standards. If anyone would be bottling water or, 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 or canning water and then they are not adhering to standard, it means that they will be failing the law. So standards and quality assurance are intertwined and is aware of making sure that the overall products and services uh, have got the purpose that they're intended to and they're actually fit for that purpose. One cannot talk about the global standards without referring to international standard organization, which is actually saying that standards are internationally agreed upon by experts. So whether they are digital standards, whether they are defective standards, they are agreed upon or formulated and grafted and published by experts. Experts are the ones that have got the knowledge to determine that a certain threshold, a certain benchmark, a certain level is of, us, of standard. So they, uh, they determine that after doing intensive and thorough research. So research is actually very, very important in uh, raising the standards or in addressing the standard uh, matters. So ISO indicates that we should think of standards as formula that describes the best way of doing something. It could be the best way of making a product, of managing a process, delivering a service, or supplying materials. But in a nutshell, they underscore that standards cover a huge range of activities. So in the library context, what are standards? We cannot talk about the global library standards without reference to the International Federation of Library Association and Institutions standards, which are there to support quality library and information services worldwide. And within that, because these are standards that are meant to deliver and to focus us onto um, the pinnacle or the fundamental pillar of library and information science, which is that of information resources organization, information resources storage for discoverability. The most uh, important uh, standard in my view, when it comes to that fundamental aspect of library and information science is the standard, international standard for bibliographic description. That is actually usually acronym or known as ISBD. So that is a standard that is actually guiding us in resource description and discoverability. I think you might have uh, discovered in my, uh, in the introduction that uh, in my bio data, that in the past I was teaching courses like the resource description information architecture and metadata. Therefore, bibliographic description is something that is close to my heart. So to describe resources, in order for them to be discovered, to be accessible and, and easily retrieved, there are metadata standards and schemas. There are a lot of tools that we use, like the research, like the resource description and access toolkit, the MAC digital format code, and subject headings such as the Library of Congress subject headings that are there to bring authority and control. That brings consistency in the delivery and in the processes that we do in this fundamental and huge aspect of our profession is actually quite important. Obviously, I think I cannot cover all the standards or even go into them into detail because that is actually a quite a detailed aspect. And I want to believe that a, a lot of people that in this webinar, they are already aware 
and therefore I just have to mention just a few. But these are the standards that we use to describe resources such as books, uh, videos, uh, uh, DVDs, and, and, and all these uh, different kinds of information resources in different media formats and in different uh, uh, content formats. And within IFLAM, visit the website, they've got a wealth of um, conceptual models that are also forming the guidelines and, the, and the elaborating further the standards that are there to help us in the work that we do. And related to ISBD, I would like to underscore the functional requirements for authority data. That is a conceptual model that helps us to have authoritative records and in the way that the data is actually harnessed, described, and made accessible. There are also functional requirements for bibliographic records. These are frameworks that are actually guiding catalogers and metadata specialists when they are describing resources. And there are also functional requirements for subject authority data that are helping in the subject analysis. And there are many other conceptual models. So I would suggest, and I want to believe most of you are already making the IFLA, standards uh, page at uh, your home that you visit frequently, depending on the area of expertise that you are working in. And also depending on the area or the field of library information science and services that you are focusing on. Within IFLA as well, there are general guidelines. There are a lot of gu guidelines, very elaborate guidelines for various categories and various types of libraries, from rare books and special collections, handling of photographs, uh, for guidelines for library gifts, audiovisual and multimedia materials, uh, uh, authority records and references, children's library services. As you know, libraries and information world touches on everybody. It touches on different categories of people. It touches on uh, various aspects of services and various type of information resources. So there's a wealth of information there. I just focused on just a few here for purposes of just bringing um, the context of discussion to a, a meaningful realm. Coming to the academic library context, I would like to underscore the Association of College and Research Libraries. Since 1959, they've been concerned about the standards. The first edition of these standards was published in 1959, and it has been periodically reviewed. All colleagues would agree with me that uh, we know that our information uh, world and our information sector uh, and our area is actually quite dynamic. There are a lot of changes that happen. And as changes and, 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 and change happens, standards also evolve. Hence, they are being revised. The current one is the one that was approved in 2011 and was revised in 2018. And it has got nine principles that are relating to institutional effectiveness. How is the library, how is the academic library effective in assisting the institution achieve its mandate and goals? How is the professional values of the librarian delivering and adhering to the passion and the service that they deliver? How is the educational role being carried? Because we can never divorce the fact that as librarians, especially academic librarians, we are also playing a very critical role of educating our user communities and educating ourselves as continued professional development is something that is part of our lives. And also how is the discoverability of these resources happening and going? And how are the collections, standards relating to collections, the spaces in which we offer our services, the spaces in which we work, they've got to be of a certain standard. And the administration, the management and the leadership has to be of a certain standard. So therefore, there are principles for those standards as well. And then the personnel, the human resource that is delivered, what expertise do they have? This should be a standard, and they are standards in, 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 within that principle. And then the external relations. Libraries don't exist in isolation. They've got partners within their institutions, parent institutions, as well as outside of their parent institutions because they forge collaborations and partnerships and because they are always, always striving to make sure that they capitalize on resource sharing, simply because there is no single library that has got it all. So strategic partnerships and collaborations 
are an imperative. So these nine principles that touch on these issues and they've got, these are overarching principles that have got performance indicators or guidelines that actually are outlined so that one can know whether they are meeting the standards or not, or implement them to, in order to make sure that they are, are, are attained the standards. And those guidelines help, they become the basis for the reviews and the institutional audits. They also assist a lot in self-evaluations and during the peer reviews. So we all know that academics, especially external examination, is a process of a peer review to determine if the course content that has been taught and the way the students are responding to the examination and the evaluation and assessment is of standard. And that is being subjected to external examination. And that is a peer review process. But as academic libraries, we also need to have a peer review so that our peers who are experts in these areas can come and assess us and determine whether we are actually delivering our services and delivering and, uh, and managing our products according to the standards that they have set. So there are review processes that happen and the methodology and the grading and their matrices also within these ACRL standards that are provided. So coming to the South African Academic Library context, there is the Committee for Higher Education Libraries of South Africa that we usually uh, name it or call it or known as CHELSA. CHELSA uh, in 2019 developed a framework and published a framework of South African academic library standards. And CHELSA is a committee that is actually made up of its membership is the university libraries in South Africa, as well as libraries of research councils, such as the, the science, uh, uh, the Council for Scientific Information uh, Research, and also various uh, councils such as the Agricultural Research Council, the Medical Research Council, because these are arms of government that are making sure that there is research that is happening uh, in the areas that are quite critical, such as the agriculture, medical field, uh, scientific research, and human sciences, and the humanities and sociologies in the, in the, in the social spaces. So, Chelsea's framework uh, also has got principles and performance indicators, outcomes, and a way of determining or assessing those outcomes so that we can determine whether there is impact. And the impact is intended to make sure that there is change. Uh, we have various principles. Principle one is related to governance. Are uh, we having uh, strategic goals, uh, visions, missions aligned to those of our institution? And uh, then we've got principle related to infrastructure, broadening access, funding, human resources, collections, collaborations and partnerships, the educational role of librarians and mechanisms for quality assurance, and also how the framework is being implemented, assessed and evaluated. So coming to higher education quality assurance in South Africa, the Department of Higher Education that I alluded to has got a, an independent council on higher education that is informing and advising the minister on issues and matters related to the quality of education. So this organization contributes to a transformed equitable and quality higher education in South Africa because equitable, equity is always quite fundamental. Earlier on in my background, I alluded that South Africa is not a homogeneous space. It's not a, 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 a level field, a plane where everything is equal. There are inequalities, therefore matters of equity are quite important. And then they've got frameworks or instruments that help us in making sure that we adhere to standards. There's the framework for institutional audits. There's a criteria for program accreditation, whereby when there's a new program that is being proposed, it has to make sure that it follows the criteria or an existing program Periodically, programs are reviewed, therefore they have to go for that program. Then there's a manual for institutional audits that has to be followed as well. Those are the instruments that are guiding. And the, the CHE defines quality for us. It also defines what they mean by quality assurance and quality culture, quality enhancements. They are actually defining these things so that as institutions, 
we have to be monitoring and following up on them. And also mechanisms have to be there in place to make sure that we, there's quality in the delivery of the core business of the university. And as the University of Fort Hayne, we are currently undergoing a review as the University of Fort Hayne, particularly the library. Uh, the university have been having reviews that were focusing on programs of education, programs that are offered in the faculty, whether our programs are of quality, whether our courses that are actually offered are done accordingly and according to standard. And every time those reviews were happening, they would come and assess the library in terms of space, its infrastructure and its facilities and resources to determine whether they are meeting or they are able to support the curriculum and the objectives of the program offerings. But the actual review of the library and information service itself at Fort Hay, it has never been done. And therefore we are being audited uh, at the moment. And our, it is really at an advanced stage or almost completed. Because it was, it's been done for the first time, we looked at the, the process and the, our planning and quality assurance office decided that it's very important that we start with a diagnostic baseline survey that was a field and administered among the library staff. And thereafter, they had to work on to establishing the review panel, external experts that come in to come and review us. And these are people that have done review, they are experienced and they've done reviews and they are able to come and assess whether we are meeting things according to standard. The process requires that we do a self-evaluation. We started with the self-evaluation of principles of Chelsea following their guidelines. And then we looked at the, CHS, the Council of Higher Education on Higher Education 16 standards and their guidelines. We contextualized them to the academic library context. We evaluated ourselves using the standards and the guidelines identified areas of improvement and they wrote the self-evaluation report and everything in the self-evaluation report and in the process of reviewing yourself and grading yourself. If you say you meet a standard, you are functional in a certain standard, you have to provide evidence for that. Therefore, a compiling a portfolio of evidence is quite imperative. Where you identify areas of improvement, you have to craft an improvement plan that will help you to things and turn things around. Thank you very much. Uh, this is what I had prepared for this afternoon. These are the resources that I used and I thank you for the invitation and I thank you for your audience. Uh, thank you very much, ma Madam, for your insightful theme address. I now request our second team speaker, Dr. H. L. Siddhamalaya. So, the former Chief Librarian, Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bengaluru, India, to enlighten us on the topic, Global Trend in Academic Libraries. For the next 25 to 30 minutes, the floor is yours, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. You are audible, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So, I am supposed to thank for a nice introduction of me and also the nice presentation about the institution and also nice presentation from our counterpart from South Africa. And uh, see, sorry for, again, sorry for the delay in uh, uh, presentation. So my job is uh, just to give an overview of the global trend in academic libraries uh, from time to time. And uh, this, there were two things uh, I was to talk about. One is on the LIS education and the other one is uh, the librarianship itself. When we say the librarianship itself, and, uh, when we say library, people pursue library as a building and a collection, the circulation counter or something. But the change, uh, the, the future of the library is somewhere, um, we are searching somewhere. And actually the library is uh, uh, not moved from the print electronic and even in electronic, a lot of changes have been occurring and changes are uh, faster than what we expect. So the library, the global trend now moving toward is the change management itself. How we are adjusting our, whether the education of librarianship is going hand in hand with what is already practicing in various libraries. 
In India, the librarianship is really advanced compared to European countries or any other countries in the world. And this digital librarianship, the users are really very receptive for the development, very receptive for the change, very receptive for all the development in the librarianship. See, what we try in the librarianship education is not just, uh, okay, whether the technology drives the librarianship or the librarianship drives the technology, or they are going hand in hand. Whether the LAS education goes isolated from the practice or practice isolated from the library. And majority of the LAS education as of now is getting merged with the other departments also. See, some of the universities are merging the IT department with library science or library science with IT department. Both are sharing in a chess based environment, chess based uh, credit system, and some universities are getting uh, merged with the management schools. And let's see, the change is not at uh, the generic level. Generic level is continue to do. Generic and the basic, uh, basics of library and information is continuing because the fundamental principles of science of librarianship can never be changed. And it is uh, really, it has gone to such an exhaustive as our uh, South African counterpart has shown you. There are so many standards are developed, so many protocols are developed, so many uh, the guidelines are developed. That guidelines have been automated in the environment IT era. It is not changed. It is not that uh, everything is changed. It is enhanced with the automation environment. And because of that, the, see, actually people say the change is constant, but in librarians, we feel change is very fast. By the time we reach that particular target and we want to implement certain technology or we want to implement certain content service, we want to implement our integrated service with the academia, we wanted to do some uh, uh, integrated research development system, but by the time we reach there, there is some else, something else is uh, happening. And, Tools are changing and dimensions are changing. Information seeking behavior of the user is also changing. So that catching up that speed of change is the biggest thing. And the first is the research as a library, research library, the relation between the institution and the library itself is the biggest thing that is not happening. Actually, library is like working like in the silo. It is an isolated part of an institution. And it is not working in concert with the culture of the organization itself. And some of the places librarians are not part of the academia or research or the education environment in the organization itself to understand what they need. Of course, the expectation of the skills in research libraries are different from the bachelor degree level or uh, first grade colleges. See, now, the biggest change that we are looking at at the first grade colleges is nobody goes to examination reading the textbook. Nobody goes to any competitive examination or other examinations reading the textbooks of earlier. In between now, textbooks and journals or ebooks or journals are becoming a raw material to prepare the course material. And now open education resources are available to the students many of the students don't they don't even bother about what is my textbook they bother about the exhaustive list of syllabus so that is how things are getting changed and because of that the change management is happening within the institutional education environment within the uh, development of the library system within the technology but they are not integrating with each other. So the biggest change that we libraries are suffering is the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. We don't know what is going to happen next day. What is going to happen? Uh, see, the investment on uh, technology actually in the IT-based information system, the investment is much, much more than the uh, buying a books and the journals in physical media. Of course, now physical media is almost in the verge of closing. They, when we want to catch up with this particular digital environment, the intensive, the 
I, the infrastructure intensive development has to be done instead of building. Earlier, we were thinking of a building, beautiful building, and that was a challenge, a aesthetic, functional building with the furniture and the visibility of the uh, physical collection, so many things. We wanted to conduct book talk. So now people have got a search in. And also when the Google came, online environment, that's the drastic change in Google. Uh, uh, appearance. Even majority of even good doctors and educators, researchers are Googlers. And there it is spoiling or it is supporting. That is up to the information literacy that we are going to give to education. Information literacy that we are going to the students and faculty. While preparing for these, uh, their education, while preparing for their uh, uh, classroom materials, there are ready-made materials which are authenticated by various faculties or see MIT, US and uh, so many IITs in India and uh, NDL, the National Digital Library people are doing it and Indians of Science with many other uh, advanced research centers are coming out with the uh, open education materials. So what is happening is they are trying for a a tailor made materials, including the, including the multimedia materials. In our health science, I worked about 35 years in a health science field and a medical field. See, we each culture right from the first year is distinctively different from the second year of the student and third year or fourth year and the faculty and the practice. It's first year students want the morphology of the human body. They want uh, the multimedia material to learn the dissection of the body and virtual dissection table is there. And the same way in our science, pure science, the teaching method is getting changed. And that is why, see, keeping an isolated library for reading and reading and reading, not understanding much and not visualizing what they have learned, it's a waste. So now we are making a lot of changes in the librarians. You, we are developing a lot many things and uh, multimedia material, integrating our uh, library materials, teaching material from library to the classroom. The libraries are trying to establish in the globally as a partner in the classroom itself, partner in the research level. See, right from the, the research also, right from the identifying the topic of the research, and uh, identifying the topic of the research too. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You can continue, sir. So is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So right from the identifying the research topic, See, that is the biggest uh, thing when they come and searching for the literature, authentication of the literature and avoiding the duplication of the research topic itself and uh, plagiarism check and also to teach them the IPR aspects and to make them even, see, libraries are now supporting the, the researchers with the tools and technology also. There are so many uh, SPSS package or Zotero or the Mandalay. See, there are two things in uh, the research scenario. That is one is the research methodology. Other one is research literacy. So they made everybody are in the classroom level itself, the research methodology is taught, but nobody teach them the research literacy. Literacy means how to cite the article, how to search for the article, how to identify the topic, how to go for uh, uh, this particular review itself. I, see, there are so many things which are, uh, you see, that is why information literacy, technology literacy, and research literacy help them to write articles. We, we have started the author support system in the library, which is the best journal. So many are, there are predatory journals are spoiling old things. So that is why there is a big change in a library a culture or understanding itself. If you think of library, there are so many uh, changes that you are looking at in the global level. So there is an integrated library system sort of thing. It is totally user-centered and it has got an interoperability with the total main institution itself. Library management system is sharing with the learning management system. See, as you all know about as an academicians and librarians, 
both know about a learning management system. Learning management, right from the admission to issue of the uh, degree mass card or degree certificate, it, it is automating its procedure, automating everything, and it, you know, delay is cut down and it has been made very confidential and error free materials. So, LIS, the library management system, is pinning the particular uh, education material to the syllabus and each and every topic, including the multimedia. See, it is integrating itself into the syllabus copy itself. When they click on the particular topic, all the relevant textbook, multimedia materials, and open education materials, all those things will appear in a pop up mode or whatever the mode, or even if you are selecting authentication or ranking the materials of the best one suits to that syllabus, suits to that level of understanding of the student is happening. So that is the style of uh, the movement that is education happening. So second thing is, second thing is the use access to the facilitating the access to the laptops and to the handheld systems. And other one is the most important nowadays at the globally, what is happening is all the teachers nowadays in, uh, um, in uh, even at the first grade colleges are doing very well in the using IT to teach. They are developing and so many instruction materials are developed. And so many PPTs with the uh, integrated with the multimedia are developed. So we are, the libraries are trying to create an institution platform, institution repository of all the search outcome, academic outcome, and also including the students, these uh, students' assignments, uploading on the assignments, everything is happening from the library. Library website is connecting even the students' assignment to the particular textbook, to the assignment to the particular syllabus copy. All these things are now getting integrated. So it is dynamically, the library and JPEG globally are becoming a fronted library. It is not that they are sitting and uh, circulating. See, one other misunderstanding is those who are circulating the book are not really librarian. They are the uh, non-librarian staff who are circulating. That is just a training given to them. But librarians are and trying to understand the academia, trying to understand the research, trying to understand the IT implementation, trying to understand the LAN and WAN of the particular institution. And if there are 10 institutions creating a one single uh, cataloging format and also sharing the uh, materials physically as well as virtually and digitally is happening. So that is the, clear, the main thing happening in nowadays in the academic institutions. Hello. Okay. See, now the biggest movement of the librarians. See, now earlier we started uh, creating a consortium of all the libraries, okay, all the university and our counterpart was mentioning like an inflip net. Now here in uh, the, uh, IFLA and here in India, we have a uh, inst we have a network called the university established a uh, network called InfliPnet, which are giving a uh, endless journals for all the colleges and also trying to integrate the you know, open education materials and also supporting creating of education materials or course materials within India. And there are so many uh, national education policy people also are uh, supporting or funding the development of what this one the NTN is doing a lot many things in India. So see now the libraries are becoming content creators. Libraries are becoming publishers. Libraries are getting integrated to the activity of the institution. And see people think that how much one can invest on how journals, how many crores of rupees, even an Indian of science cannot buy all the journals related to their uh, users. And they cannot give hundred percent information. Then they thought uh, so many consortia, all IAS together, IAT together, established. Even then, they could not meet more, not more than fifty percent of the information needs of the scientific community. But then, what the global movement was the biggest. Hello, hello. Yes, yeah, sir. Nice. 
it's clear because there was no say the global movement is open access open access uh, the understanding about the open access is also not very clear to the users open access means okay if you go to the open source you go to the open access we get uh, uh, article free of cost but just accessing a downloading an article downloading a book does it help you you can read you can say it or you can write an article but there are so many corollaries or so many developments are happening supposing you want to create a course material for a particular uh, uh, class using that particular textbook or two three textbooks that was not allowed in this open environment you can uh, create a course material you can cite you can distribute you can uh, distribute to the all the students and you can uh, modify it you can edit it see the i the, the this uh, copyright will not come on the way the open means really open it is not just uh, free of access so that kind of openness is coming it is not that just download and you can use it you can you see many people were bothered about copyright as if it is a legal criminal of course it is uh, if it is a plagiarism if you are copying somebody and putting your name or if you are copy something sell it for a uh, commercial activity or sell it for the money then it is a criminal activity but for academia it is not fair use environment fair use doctrine is helping all the users and that fair in acts doctrine has been enhanced to the publishing itself publishing level and our information repositories all the faculty are so contributing something all that is established on the information repository of the respective college and thereby the visibility intellectual visibility of the institutions are happening so the globally what is happening is it is not just libraries are not just circulating a book buying a book buying a journal or the it is creating an information collecting information collating an information which is suitable to the learners teachers researchers and also the multimedia materials wherever it is so that means it is it has got a lot of collaboration and a cooperation with the faculty the librarian alone cannot do he can't do anything that clap has to happen between the faculty and the librarian see you we, we the librarian knows what he has got in the library but library do not know faculty is going to teach which class what is the subject what he wants what clarification wants what whether the teaching uh, line of a teacher and the students line of expectation of learning or learning disability there are so many disabilities for the students to learn whether the teacher single teacher for 100 students can he meet all the learning scale of 100 students or 50 students who are in the classroom it's in the monologue that is the biggest threat for learners so many people drop learning so if at all we want to individualize the learning for each and every student with the row with uh, say with the many barriers also to come across all the students to come out with a good learning style addressing each and everybody's learning style or reinforcing the learning from the library it needs a good collaboration between students teachers and librarians so some attempt you see in the beginning itself you don't expect librarian to do everything or teacher to do everything or a student to give a feed that cycle student feedback and teachers uh, expectation and whether the Uh, that particular clap between the student and the teacher's teaching is happening or not observation from the librarian what to fill what not to fill in the medical system also librarian goes to the ward round along with the grand round of the doctors to identify their information needs come back and search the information with the full text serve them so that they can treat the patient better medical mistakes to bring down the uh, number of medical mistakes he cannot make zero it down but they can bring down the mistakes and take care of the patient so that particular gap that particular feed of information tailor made information is happening at all the level so that is what has to happen uh, in the library and also it is whether the authenticity of the information is happening or not and there are so many things happening in transformative uh, scholarly communication transformative uh, scholarly publication is also happening with between the funding agencies and now the biggest demand for the library is the research data 
research data management is becoming art of the uh, science nowadays. So library or teaching, it is not, see, information is everything. It may be a multimedia material, it may be a journal article, it may be a book, it may be a data, or consolidating the, that data. And our uh, earlier counterpart from South Africa was, I am good in metadata. See, the metadata is becoming a spring between the publishing and also linking the course material, linking the student, linking it to the LMS. So that particular style is happening. And second thing is everybody, okay, they say they go to Google, they speak something and they will see one screen, second screen, third screen, and later they can't see the number of hits, it gives millions of hits. But in the, the libraries are known for two important things for learners and academicians. Nobody wants to pay for information is very well established. Library gives information or a book or a journal article free of cost because institution is investing or government is investing or somebody, some way the payment will happen. And now almost about the 50% to 60% of the information is available at free of cost, but collation and also aggregation of those materials and providing access to those materials and by and installing in a discovery layer or a search engine is becoming an important thing. So all these changes are, see now, consolidation, aggregation, and providing an access, searching and simulating it to the user need is becoming larger of the thing. That is becoming important for today's material. So with this, see, the, because of the technology, because of the academic uh, integrity, uh, integration with academic and research materials, including the clinical, in the, in, in the health science materials, even the clinical information, uh, there is something called evidence-based material, evidence-based medicine. So, I, I, so many articles are published in a best of the best journal, and that article itself is doubted. Can it be directly used to the uh, patient treatment? Oh, they say this is a symptom, this is a, a particular drug available, and this is what the prognosis has to be, this is what has to be, diagnosis has to be done, and you can just administer that particular manner the drug can it happen so there is something called evidence-based medicine so all the gold standard materials are reviewed again there are different type of reviews. one is peer review as you all know publishing before publishing in this particular journal and then is open review then user feedback another one what now is professionally trained systematic reviews or meta-analysis from the status region is having is becoming the order of the day if even insurance companies are looking at the treatment modalities and protocol whether they have used evidence-based material to treat the patient or not so that level of uh, spectrum of information for the least authentic to most authentic is happening but users are going to google google does not give you the authenticity information of any material of course that doesn't mean google is useless google is useless if you personally have got some knowledge to select and use it properly otherwise google is no material google is not a good thing for academics and research so and actually one other uh, uh, this material about like uh, layers education and the ppt is lost because of the other system has gone dry. but however i tried my level best to communicate the global trend of the academic libraries or research libraries or health libraries but now what is demanding is just general librarianship does not help all the globally everybody are providing tyler basic See, they are creating a health librarian, they are creating engineer librarianship, they are creating research librarianship, they are creating research informationists, they are creating research trainers and trainers of training. All these things are becoming very well advanced. And in India, we are still thinking library as a building and a book and a circulation and also where to circulate. And there is no clap between the libraries or among the faculty among 
see instructional design is becoming very important see i prepare some classroom material i prepare some teaching material i have written my own notes and i am coming to the students that has been dead your faculty knows very well and all the teaching faculty knows very well they can't prepare their own notes even the notes are to be regularized authentic material and it may not be authentic so there are authentic teaching resources are available there are authentic learning material whether they have to go with this or not sometimes what you learn not necessarily the authentic one it may be wrong even in the examination even at the practice level that's why it is needed to know the digital library landscape and online information environment online information landscape and also it is high time that all the faculty as research students and including the teachers need to know how would this total scenario of the scholarly communication and it needs two to three hours or two to three days to make you understand what is the position of the scholarly communication for teachers scholarly communication for students scholarly communication for researchers and authors and as well as advanced study with this i say thank you all thank you very much sorry for all the disturbances happened during this time uh, thank you very much sir okay thank you thank you sorry it's okay <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, for your insightful team address. Uh, now the floor is open for the interaction. Okay, we will take up questions which we have received from the chat box and registration form. I now request Vinay Sagar, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to moderate the interaction session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Ranga, sir. Uh, very good evening to all the dignitaries. Uh, Uh, my first question is to madam uh, koni ma'am can i go with the question yes please uh, ma'am are you completely happy with the funds uh, to the field of library uh, right now what you are getting so am i completely happy with yes ma'am are, are you completely happy with the funds what you are getting uh, to the field of library uh, right now um i find it very exciting i joined or decided to study library and information science after being a, a, a teacher and um, the developments that are happening in library and information science i always find them challenging but i enjoy those challenges um and again you know the pandemic presented a situation whereby we had to instantly go online fully and the thing is because libraries had already in um been offering their services electronically they had a lot of electronic resources moving online wasn't a big uh challenge but the challenge was how we interact with our users in that moment and to save and salvage the academic year because we had always been used to interact with our users directly or maybe remotely to a certain extent but to have them going instantly uh, online and working from home was a, quite a challenge i think one of the other things that excites me are the developments of open access and i'm i'm so glad that our colleagues um my previous um uh, the last speaker touched on that one and the the social justice that has to happen because of the way the global north has been capitalizing on the knowledge production and, and, and generated knowledge from the global south so i'm i'm i am so excited at times but there are sometimes when i feel worried and concerned but on the whole i think i am happy with the structures and the systems that are going on we have to understand that disruptions such as technological disruptions are also coming into play and within them we just have to be following theories of sense making of brenda devon that we have studied in information seeking behavior 
and as we were studying mm -hmm. information okay. seeking. And if we try and make sense and uh, brace ourselves for the fact that we don't have the answers, but as librarians, we are capable of getting the answers because we have the skills to gather information and, and knowledge and data. Thank you. Yeah, ma'am. Ma uh, I hope more... I've answered your question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, one more question. Ma'am, what technological advancements do you expect in the field of libraries in near future? Ooh, that's a that's a that's a, a, a tough one. Um, in the near future, I we are already in the digital era. We are in the fourth IR and the, the advancements of artificial intelligence, robotics are already here. We're already feeling them, but we have to, some libraries have already advanced a lot. Others, we are still coming and, and immersing ourselves into harnessing robotics and artificial intelligence. The technology of the fifth, uh, of the 5G and the, it's, um elements and what it has to bring in is something that we need to strategically position ourselves to be able to take advantage of because as libraries we can never afford to be left behind uh, the pre uh, the last speaker talked about change and how fast paced things are and how we must embrace change and always be agile in the way we do things. So I think 5G and the fifth industrial revolution is going to bring technologies that some of them, I don't even, I have not even really imagined fully, but I am, I am aware that there are these big things that are going to happen. And I always approach things from the positive attitude that, I know the unknown and uh, is complicated and uh, is full of volatility. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm also tapping on what the last speaker spoke, spoke about when he was bringing the VUCA model. It's full of that and it's a reality, but we have to always keep constantly touch with the pastel, the political climate and the landscape around us, the economical climate around us, the sociological uh, um, uh, 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 reality around us, the technological and the natural environment and the legal uh, landscape around us. We always have to be monitoring. Unfortunately, because we are dealing with information, data, we find ourselves everywhere. And uh, in the process, sometimes it's difficult to keep up with a lot of things, but we always have to be striking a balance. I, I hope I've answered the question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for answering the questions. Uh, my uh, next question is to uh, Sid Siddhamalaya, sir. Sir, can I go with? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, you were the pioneer in digital digitalizing the library resources. What challenges uh, did you face uh, while working on it, sir? Actual challenge is not the technology problem, not the content, it is reaching the user making them to understand what are the resources available, how to use it. Many people, small things, very small things, in uh, from Rajiv Gandhi Health University, we started serving 700 colleges. We enable the resources, accessibility at each and every institution, making the faculty and students to understand what is available, what is not available, how to access, how to use it, and wh what feedback they have to give it to provide some more resources. So that was the thing that uh, interaction between the among the users and between the system and the user end user was the biggest thing actually nowadays uh, uh, people can use the mobile and uh, the technology is not that big and the students are much better than even uh, uh, all of us and they explore much better but thing is with the right resources okay you tell them everything about all the resources at the end, they go back again to the Google. So making them to use authentic resources, making them to understand about what is the non-authentic resources, predatory journals, predatory information, false information, 
and non authenticated making as the differentiating between the good and the bad and also making them to use the quality material was the biggest thing that is end user reaching the end user in all aspect is the challenge even now even after some time it's a biggest challenge establishment is not a big thing as you have asked for earlier question was money you can't say this is the big money you have given is it enough nobody can suffice the money but there are alternative model to suffice the information is ultimately we are going to buy everything or not buying it there are so many models now has come patron driven acquisition we don't need to buy everything why should i buy everything i buy based on the request i can on a click of a button i can download and give it and pay them also why should i buy why should i waste my money library money why should i waste my country money and we can download and we can establish and based on the need based on the patron request based on the student request we can we should not bother about money that's not we should find out it or devise a proper plan to reach the user that is that is the biggest thing proper planning at the acquisition level proper planning at the see 60% of information as i said is on open access but aggregating them is becoming a difficult and making them to know so the end user is also another difficult thing and also there is one more thing which we are struggling to reach the user to say this is good this is bad and that's the differentiation between the good and the bad is the biggest thing because that quality of information quality assignment quality uh, the actually assessment by the user themselves we are struggling okay these are the so 25 uh, yardstick that we are giving if that yardstick is met okay that is meeting the normal quality of any literature so reaching them is a big thing yes sir uh, sir one more question <clears throat> what kind yeah. of uh, researchers uh, would you suggest to the present uh, library professionals actually everybody are doing quantitative analysis of okay i have this many book i have this many user see quantitative studies will not give you real development see is it the technology should not drive the library library should not actually now so many technologies learned from library actually what if that technology does it is handling the information what kind of information what kind of content it is see we are going to give see the algorithm for the information is difficult than the technology algorithm there is a defined long way there is defined workflow there is defined uh, material to go see now researchers are developed earlier people used to develop a workflow around the library now libraries are building the workflow in each and every user so how that quality and creation of information around that content is most important that quality analysis is important quantitative research is not good qualitative research is uh, now important addressing the information need or information seeking behavior or quality assessment of the users quality and creating a profile or create a profile in such a way that automatically it links to that particular uh, information to information interaction is going to happen with this artificial intelligence now particularly with machine learning it's fantastic so you go with uh, this uh, uh, gps it will say this, this 10 minutes you are going to reach 30 minutes you are not going you are going to reach it is because of the machine learning it analyzes hundreds of uh, uh, vehicles traveling there and it says average it takes and it will tell you okay this is an example with all that arms or a uh, clog in the traffic whatever may be the case even in this in, in this area also uh, this uh, machine learning artificial intelligence started with semantics librarians have knows how to establish a semantics in information how to go with an rda research uh, this resource di description and access that is what uh, our counterpart from south africa said she also has started, did talk about rda that it is resource description and access is going to create a semantics so that is where the so many researchers are there how to meet the end users automatically how to meet the end users is systematically these two are very important it may be a digital library it may be a uh, physical library and on its own on its own stage because we see the challenge for librarians is we have to take along with us the past 
we have to take uh, implement the present we have to look ahead for the future so these past present and future is along with the librarians to go we do not know what is going to happen tomorrow but we should be ready we should be equipped we should get skilled for implementing those things or we have to identify mobilize our new uh, education people the new graduates we have to make them to understand that so there are so many quality uh, quantitative research there are so many quality research is required in all this area uh, thank you so much sir uh, for answering the questions uh, thank you koni ma'am uh, this is all from the q and a session over to you ranga sir again and again i am saying sorry it's actually okay, my ppt was uh, suddenly dropped i could not uh, switch over from the system to system then i had to become little extempo for whatever i want to share my experience so sorry again. i enjoyed your presentation so much thank you very much thank i'll keep also. in touch over email bye bye also, your job was a very big task thank you vinay sir uh, thank you very much respected speakers for answering the questions of the participants a small announcement before the presidential remarks we will now send the feedback form link in the chat box copy and fill it for the certificate the link will be active for next 48 hours very shortly we will meet in the upcoming international webinar of our imin college the topic is intellectual property rights session 5 that is on 12a 2021 thursday on tomorrow now i request shri wd ashok sir the honorary trustee of shishadripuram educational trust to render the presidential remarks over to you sir thank you a very good evening to one and all from shishadripuram evening degree college this webinar international webinar which was conducted on global standards in library science this was the session 6 which was held from this uh, college and a very good platform to bring such a renowned per person siddhamalaya sir who is in this academics and in the rajiv gandhi uh, education system and he has uh, he has a vast experience in this field and he has uh, given lot of uh, uh, worthwhile uh, education uh, actually to all the librarians or the education platform actually he wanted to give more i think uh, regarding the pseudo publishings and the uh, cloning of publishings maybe time is not sufficient for him if he is allowed maybe he will give a much more uh, very good presentation i would like to thank also at the same time dr uh, koni bisto who was the director of uh, ra library from south africa she has presented about uh, so from the uh, south african point of view their ac academics and their colleges institutions how it is running and how the functioning in south africa has been uh, coming up in the perspective of south africa and the international standards madam has given our uh, uh, type of uh, education which is happening there and actually the standards or the norms what we call in today's guidelines why are these guidelines necessary or the standards which are there it is all basically to see that a uniformity in the system comes up or there is a benchmark in the competition or between the institutions or a student uh, comes about to such a platform where a benchmark is created so that uh, all educational platforms which is available for the student or the teaching fraternity which gives them then opportunity to see that a consistency is maintained and a library platform gives them this opportunity to go ahead with research and uh, their educational whatever the outlooks are there so that they can bring up to the best of the knowledge and they can produce it to the students at the much more very good atmosphere basically in the library we have the formal and the informal types of work which is happening but at the same time work defined you can just say that the competitiveness is such that in different institutions they take it up in a very good competitiveness and see that the library is uh, advanced in such a way that uh, digital transformation in the library settings also take place and uh, at the present uh, scenario the role of uh, rfid or the electromagnetic devices which are coming up uh, to say save the time for the actual student or anybody 
which is helping them at the same time to see that the faster is the time which is being spent and they acquire uh, the actual uh, what requirement of the literature is necessary it is at the fastest of the click in the last session also we were just telling earlier systems were we had to pick up the books in the library we had to take the books manually and we had to sit down and read but uh, at this uh, current situation of the pandemic also it has become a click and a read button that is uh, what uh, it has become by the click of the button you will have to just go ahead with to and see that the librarian actually gives the platform or gives us the guide to the students where the actual uh, source is available so that it becomes much more faster instead of for example you can say that instead of him coming now to the library in search of question papers or uh, any details requirements it is not necessary for him to come and search in the library anymore students must be able to get these systems in the online platform they can actually be provided in the actual websites and uh, other platforms so that within a click uh, information must be available for the students and to see that whatever the help from the library side has to be made has to be made it in the digital platform also and also we say that uh, what are the things that standards bureau of uh, indian standards are also there which are making up the different platforms and we have our uh, ugc yeah, that is university grants commission which are also looking up to the government uh, organizations or government libraries which are uh, giving uh, different suggestions and we have different commissions which earlier were uh, brought about to see that uh, changes in our uh, library takes place at the same time different eminent persons in the long ago the, for example radhakrishnan commission or uh, ranganath commission or kotoria kotari commission which were held in the improvement of the indian system of the library they have all brought about their own uh, whatever the contributions were there it was tried to build up the indian system of library system but now their uh, platforms are just the basic uh, foundation type where now the digital system is coming up and uh, seeing that uh, whatever the things are there the actually complete uh, roll over has to be done where the old platforms will not hold good at all at this current scenario where the digital systems are uh, making a lot of uh, advancements we have to accordingly change over to this uh, digital or online platforms in this current mode of pandemic i would like to say that uh, according to just to brief up uh, some uh, users who are not uh, aware of our uh, usual uh, randanathan uh, five laws he had given it for the improvement of the libraries that is uh, every reader is or her book must be available or uh, every book and its reader save time for the lead reader a library is a growing organism a library should be a narrative in its own outlook these were the things which he had given it to see that the library functions in such a way that it doesn't any time remains a static one it should always be in a productive and a changeable platform these laws have provided a scientific approach to the library sciences in the past but lot of changes are coming up and as uh, sir uh, sidamalaya sir was telling for example if you just touch it you have to actually go for checking plagiarism is one thing which is uh, coming up and i have to just uh, say that in our institution in uh, we have also included this uh, turnitin software in our uh, library in elanka and uh, which is being utilized for our research projects also for the students as well as the teaching faculties research activity is taking place and also librarians are assisting the students and teaching faculty to get citations or even the plagiarism check has been also been accommodated i just wanted to bring to the notice of others that plagiarism or turnitin is available with us in at elanka branch and at the same time digital transformation is also happening and uh, siddhamalaya sir just uh, quoted that uh, predatory publishings and uh, cloned uh, pseudo journals are available so everyone has to note also you should not become a prey to those uh, leading fictions which are also there in the journalist journals so whenever research is taking place you will have to be very careful 
once you want to put it in a good journal where you want to actually publish it so that is a different topic altogether just as uh, siddhamalaya sir has given a vast uh, thinking i just don't want to repeat the same things what he has already given it so i want to just uh, thank for this wonderful platform where the two eminent uh, spokesperson team they have touched their wonderful teams on their own topics and i would like to thank uh, sheshadipuram evening degree college the staff principal sn satish sir and also all the coordinators vinay sagar ranga darapa konnur yogananda and rajat bhs sir who have all coordinated to bring up this uh, all six sessions in the library sciences A wonderful sessions were all went away in a very nice way i would like to thank one and all and the student fraternity who have also come up into this uh, wonderful platform thank you very much thank you sir for rendering the presidential remarks i now request abhilash ji assistant professor department of commerce to propose vote of thanks thank you sir good evening one and all i am abhilash ji assistant professor sheshali from evening degree college it is my proud privilege to propose vote of thanks on behalf of sheshali from evening degree college on this occasion at the outset i thank university of fort hare south africa for associating with us to conduct this international webinar i would like to express a sincere gratitude to dr koni bitsu director university of fort hare library south africa for presenting an international theme talk on academic library standards and quality assurance in South African perspective. I am humble and grateful to you, Madam. I would like to express a sincere thanks to Dr. H. S. Siddhamalaya, former Chief Librarian, Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bengaluru, India, for presenting an excellent team talk on global trend in academic li libraries. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. I express a sincere thanks to Sri W. D. Ashok sir, Honorable Trustee, Sheshadri Puram Educational Trust, for rendering the presidential address. Thank you, sir. My special thanks to our beloved young and energetic principal, Professor Yenne Satish sir, who is the robust of our Sheshadri Puram Evening Degree College. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank the Rapakono Program Coordinator, Rajat B S Coordinator, IQAC, who have helped us to materialize this webinar. I express our gratitude to all the principals, convenors, and members of our sister institutions and other colleges, academicians, research scholars, students, and delegates across the globe for participating in, in this webinar. we will ever remain grateful to our teaching and administrative staff for their support thank you one and all uh, thank you sir uh, once again thank you one and all principal sir can be conclude the webinar yes sir uh, thank you ashok sir for, for joining with us sir thank you thank you thank, thank you, you sir sir thank you